So thanks everybody for attending. Um, our, our speaker today is gonna be Eliana from NeuroVision. She's a product manager at NeuroVision. Eliana, do you wanna, you wanna take over and, and kind of drive the presentation? I'm gonna ask questions along the way uh, <laughs> if I get confused about something. Um, and cool. you guys can ask questions out there and I'll be your voice uh, to Eliana as she does her presentation. So without further ado, Eliana from NeuroVision. Hi, Tony. Thank you very much for the introduction and thank you very much everyone for logging in. I hope to make this informative, but also entertaining um, and hopefully answer all your questions. Um, I'm here to present NeuroVision and we're going to be talking about our identity recognition platform. It's a nice morning here in Sydney, Australia. Um, and yeah, I'm really looking forward to showing you this. Um, so to give you a little bit of an agenda, we're going to discuss um, NeuroVision, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the company and then we're going to do a live demo of the product. And of course, after presenting NeuroVision, we're going to be jumping to uh, how NeuroVision works with NX and we're going to do a live demo of the integration. So we're going to be playing around with labels and identities and at the end, uh, we have a Q&A se session, but um, like you said before, if you have any questions along the way, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Um, so without further ado, uh, that's me, Eliana. Um, some of you can recognize me from the marketing materials. Uh, if you've been to some of the roadshows we've been doing for the past two years. Um, Near Vision is based in Sydney, Australia. We are a tech startup and we have 20 engineers working locally across machine learning, mobile applications and distributed systems. Um, we the company is two years old, but uh, we started down the road um, a few years back uh, building cloud solutions for IP cameras um, and stumbled upon uh, the incredible volume of false alarms that motion detection algorithms uh, were causing back then. So similar to NX's history, there has to be a better way to do that, right? So we um, investigated deep learning and um, become, became very skilled in it and started developing uh, facial recognition algorithms, which is our current focus, uh, with the goal to accurately identify people from security cameras. And when I go a little bit more into what, uh, what we call the product, uh, that's going to make more sense, uh, but that defines the boundaries of the problem that we, are, uh, that we are tackling, right? We want to create a platform that can work in the real world, that, could, um, that can recognize people from real life footage and not just the typical um, face rec controlled environment that you're used to seeing, like the, the airports and such. Um, the team on site develops the algorithms. So um, everything that we use in the NeuroVision product is developed uh, and designed here in Australia. Our servers are based in Sydney too. Um, and this is the problem that we decided to tackle, right? We, um, we as a tech startup, we decided that um, just by looking at the multiple offers in the system, that uh, none of them were uh, work perfectly in a real life environment where cameras are um, higher than expected with different types of lens sensors and producing different types of images. So um, what I'm here to present to you is our identity recognition platform. And we've set ourselves a pretty ambitious goal. Uh, we want to give businesses and organizations superhuman insights into who is around their premises. Um, why did we go through the trouble of naming our platform like that? Um, because facial recognition is an umbrella term that's been used loosely to represent different types of uh, problem solving approaches to detecting faces in cameras. Uh, but your identity is way more than just your face. Um, if you think about yourself, and you can see me coming in the office at that very, at that very point in time, um, I'm not just what my face looks like, I am also my preferences, I am also my behaviors, my identity also is comprised of the groups I choose to associate with. Um, in this case, I'm a staff member, but I could also be a member of a blacklist, I could be a VIP customer at a gaming venue, um, and those, all those, um, those uh, variables are what constitute the identity. And uh, it's not, so it's not just about detecting me and defining if my face belongs to me. It's about handling an entire identity in the near vision system. And when we look into the identities view of our product, that's going to become more clear. Um, 
when it comes to recognition, I mean, I said that we are focusing on facial recognition, but um, that's a very restrictive uh, description of the approach that we decided to take. Um, the pipeline that we designed to recognize people includes more than just a facial recognition algorithm. We use other um, machine learning algorithms such as bounding box tracking and um, liveness detection. And we do smart, we process smartly the faces that are detected to make sure that by the time they hit the product, they are of the good enough quality to be used for these identities and to yield the results that you're looking for. Um, and the last piece of the puzzle at this stage is the platform portion. Um, information isn't anything if you can't action on it. So uh, you have to have a way to consume all those recognition results uh, through analytics that help you discover insights, uh, through reports that you can receive on a frequent basis that can inform future decisions, but also via the apps, right? Business is done on the go. You may need to um, check something while you're away of, the, of, of your local site or you may need to know in real time whenever someone shows up, right? If you have a blacklist user, um, a member or whoever, you want to know in real time that they're around and maybe send a real time notification to your security guard so they can come and get it. So the platform portion is what brings us together. Um, we have um, some components built into the NeuroVision platform, but we integrate with incredible providers such as NX to um, complement our product. And I mentioned before um, that we wanted to solve these type of problems for security cameras. So when we designed the algorithms that we use for NeuroVision, we, uh, trained, the foot we trained them with um, security footage, not just celebrity photos of stock photographs. So then the faces that the algorithm is trained with resemble the type of faces that we will encounter when we implement. And um, I think that's pretty much a big distinctive point that I, that I wanted to tell you about at this stage, because that's what makes NeuroVision work better than other providers. Hey, Eliana, Thank what's um, what's like a, a training data set? Like how many faces do you guys look at? Uh, millions of faces. I, it, it's hard to tell you a concrete number because we've um, we've trained with uh, with multiple faces, but, and, then, um, and we've trained multiple algorithms as well. Yeah. So you have multiple phases, multiple algorithms. Um, uh -huh. Like, how does it deal with uh, different demographics, like uh, you know, male, female, um, you know, skin tone, all that type of stuff? Is you have to well, like, like how it, do you it is, train it? It is very varied. Like what you what you point out, Tony, is actually something that um, the people that have been uh, listening about or hearing about face rec for a while are, are used to hearing about. Uh, there's this um, this bias that you have to prevent by making sure you train your algorithms with enough variety data and by enough variety data it means across different genders across different ethnicities um, even different lighting conditions um, different levels of occlusion right you want to see faces that are um, obscured and faces that are clear so um, that's part of um, that's that's like the secret recipe of, of, of the algorithm and what makes them distinguish uh, from each other right um, so let me show you the first slide of this of the product um, we talked about identity and we said I told you that we want to handle an identity as, as this virtual construction in Eurovision and as you can see here my identity Eliana is comprised of a bunch of faces yeah we have 12 in there um, it's more than a single face um, it can work with a single face obviously but it works better when you have more than one especially if you have multiple cameras or different lighting conditions you have my name there because you know me, but uh, name is not required. I could be an unnamed identity in the system. And at the, under my name, you can see this um, light blue label that says staff. Um, labels are gonna be a key part of the product uh, and for the rest of the demo. And that's also part of the information that we're gonna sync to NX uh, for you guys to be able to search by. But labels is the way that uh, we decide to group identities in the system to create these groups of interest that you want to then see across your analytics, um, that you want to create real-time alerts on, um, and that you want to also explore in, uh, in, in your identity list. So below the labels, uh, and which by the way, labels, you can create as many as you want, and labels are flexible enough to accommodate multiple use cases. So you can have stuff uh, deliveries, external contractors, your blacklists, your VIPs, as many as you wish. 
Um, and at the bottom, uh, you can see that there's a phone number, a membership number, and free drinks. Those are custom metadata fields that you can create and either fill manually or sync from any other system. And those, are, those metadata fields intend to register um, preferences, um, external IDs, or any other, um, any, even notes for profiles. So all those little pieces complement what we consider an identity in the near vision sense. And of course, we're talking about facial rec. So at the very right, you see a historical list of every time that I was recognized um, ever since my identity got created in the system. And any of those clips, you can tap on and play video from. And uh, when we jump on the iPad to do a demo, um, I'm gonna do exactly that. Um, but this is the individual level and it can work great if you're wondering, if you have a concrete question about myself, where have I been lately? Um, if you are investigating a concrete identity, this is the way to go. But sometimes you need to zoom out a little bit. You need to see the activity across every identity that's in your system. And that's the section that I'm showing you right now. Um, the activity section uh, includes front and center this graph uh, that you see with multiple colors. The colors in the graph are the labels, colors that you chose. So that's why picking up the way that identities are grouped in the system is so key, because then those colors are gonna help you find interesting insights and you're gonna start your investigation on them. So is there, is there a limit to the number of labels? No, no, you can go crazy. Okay. <laughs> um, a, couple, this, a, a couple questions came in too. Sure, uh, sure. On top of that, um, uh, does hairstyle affect it? N well, it's difficult to say if, if the hairstyle is blocking the face, uh, obviously it will because we are detecting your face and we are picking up the, um, the key features of your nose, your, um, your eyes and your mouth. So, but if your hair is just tied up um, on the back like a ponytail, it wouldn't affect it. So as long as it's not obscuring part of your face, it shouldn't affect it, right? So, so that's correct. Um, and then kind of related to that was, uh, you know, does the system, uh, this is the question from James, is does the system automatically build the image library of a person? Like, do, do adding additional, does it add additional images as a person is recognized? And then how do you verify, like, the image is correct? Like, so if it misidentifies someone, do you, are you able to say that's not this person? You, yeah, no, I'm not going to be able to show you right now with this slide because okay. it's static, but when we do the demo, yes. So you're covering uh, the demo. You, you can, but you can provide feedback on, uh, on false results. But coming back to the early part of the question, we offer you, um, after you create an identity in the system, we start trying to recognize that person and we offer you those faces for you to add to those identities. But there is a user step in between where you have to confirm it. Um, okay. We'll still, I mean, we'll still do our best effort and we're still gonna show you best quality faces. We're gonna white out all the blurry and obscured images from it. So by the time the faces are offered to you, they're gonna be of good quality. Uh, but you have to, there is an interaction there. You have to, um, you have to add them because of course, this is also, even though we fare great um, when it comes to accuracy, the truth is the system is not 100% perfect and you need to, um, you need to give feedback to right. it. Right. So um, it, it can, you, could, you could say like it continues to learn like the, the, absolutely. the as you use it? Yeah, the whole process of, um, actually the whole process of setting up this app on a, on a, on a site, uh, what we do is once you start creating your identities in the system, that's, that becomes the source of the way the model performs, right? Garbage in, garbage out, Tony. If your faces are poor quality or are blurry or the, the system won't perform as fine. So you train your own model with your own identities from the moment we deploy this on site. Okay, thank you. Of course. Um, so this activity view, you are, you're seeing the last tower, but you can of course explore different time frames, um, last seven days, last week, last month. Um, you can also filter this view by camera, by label, and by identity. And this information can also be exported to a CSV file. So if you want to use a BI tool to later process in these insights, you can as well. Um, but uh, we are also going to expose this track, this um, historical track of 
all the activity that happened within the time frame that you're filtering. The graph can also, you can play with it um, and it's gonna, it's gonna come to life during the demo. But um, the other key point that I wanted to make at this stage is this view also uh, can be switched to live. So you can keep an eye on who's coming in and who were the latest people that were around in what we call the reception view. So this becomes the view that you come to to discover these, these insights and you use this view as well, filter or unfiltered to generate the reports that you want. Um, but uh, what we said, we said in the beginning that the whole point of coming up with a system like this is to not only generate insights from things you didn't know, but also react to things that you want to react in real time. So we also have notifications. Uh, our mobile apps can uh, allow you to create alarms in a similar fashion to the if then uh, rules that you can create in NX. And your notification comes, uh, includes a thumbnail of the event, the label that triggered it, the identity name, the camera and the location. Um, we have, I mean, I'm gonna show you my, uh, the iPad app and you're seeing mobile screens. We have apps across iOS and Android and we have a web app that could be accessed from any desktop computer. Um, this, this point about the notifications obviously, can translate to different use cases across the industry. This could be a blacklist, real-time alert to a security guard to come get someone that's been mischievous. It could be a VIP alert to the service staff of a gaming room so they can provide excellent customer service. It could be a notification about a member from another co-working, if you're in a co-working environment, a member from another venue coming to you and you wanna greet them by their name. Um, uses are multiple and uh, yeah, I mean, our customers keep surprising us with, with ways to use the app. Um, so we talked about the applications. We presented NeuroVision last year at ISC West 2019 and we were awarded uh, the best mobile app award during that show. Um, we also received a few awards here in Australia in security exhibitions. So we are, we're, we're very, we, we're very heartwarmed by the welcome we've received from the industry and how excited people get with the app. So I think if you, if there are no pressing questions, Tony, um, I'm going to jump to the iPad and we're going to do a demo of NeuroVision. I do have a question. Um, a couple oh. questions came in. So, no um, uh, is this an on-premise solution or is it a cloud-based solution? Well, it's actually a hybrid. We, the server is running in, on your local network. So the face detection and recognition happens on the edge, but we leverage the cloud, not only to put, make these notifications possible, but also to power the analytics and reports that we create. Um, so even though the heaviest portion of the processing happens on-premise, there is a cloud component, so the, the server needs to have internet connectivity. Okay, so it must have internet connectivity. Mm -hmm. okay. That's right. Um, and then how do you calculate like how many cameras uh, like, and the hardware that is required to like analyze the cameras? Um, well, we spec that out based on the project requirements. Um, okay. We obviously, without, without going into specifics, it's um, the two variables that drive the setup have to do with the number of cameras that you want and the number of identities that you want in the system. A typical average face recognition implementation for us includes between four and eight cameras. You want to address your choke points, right? But you may also have other areas of interest that you want to keep an eye on for traffic. So it ultimately depends on the objective of the implementation. If we want to track people as they come in and out, and that's our main interest, some cameras pointed at key, point, key entrance points would be enough. Um, so this is not a game of the more cameras, the merrier, right? This is about being strategic yeah. and placing cameras in a way that would generate the information that you're after. So like four, like you said, typical applications, four to eight cameras? Correct, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so I'm, like, obvious, I'm talking about an average size, obviously. Yeah, what's the average like hardware that's needed based off of that? Well, so the server is, um, you need an NVIDIA GPU for okay. it, but the server itself is a low to medium tier gaming machine. Uh -huh. So we're not talking about exorbitant expenses. Um, well, like again, which, which NVIDIA card, for example, like GTX 1080 or? Yeah, well, 1080 is great, um, but 1072, uh, even 1660, if you're okay. in a smaller implementation. 
Um, so you, again, that's th those are the details that we narrow down by the time that we start the implementation. So is it the, is it based? Is there a minimum uh, resolution you need for like a typical camera? Well, I mean, it, the system works with 720p, um, okay. but most implementations use 1080p onwards. Even wow. though some some uh, some people have this impression that 4K cameras would do a better job, but that's not the case. There's diminishing returns to resolution. And I'd even argue that lens quality and placement are key factors in it. So it's not just about um, the resolution itself. It's also about how well the camera is placed and high and, and the, well, yeah, mainly the about how well the camera is Exactly. Yeah, basically, if you if, it's, if it's hard for a human to recognize other humans from that angle, it's probably going to be hard for a computer as well. Couldn't have said it better. That's exactly. <laughs> okay. um, so, uh, a couple more questions came in. Is like, what kind of, of band, what kind of bandwidth uh, do you need for the cloud connection? Is it like well, it, it, again, it's hard. It's hard to give you a concrete answer, uh -huh. but um, you need to have internet. Again, we are very very smart about the information that we send to the cloud. We're not streaming video twenty four seven. We only push information when that when there's metadata available. So um, it doesn't. It's not intensive, but you do need internet connectivity. So I'd say between I don't know two and four megapixel and uh, megabytes per second. That would be a desirable speed. Um, the box needs to be able to connect to the internet to push this metadata, uh, but that's it. So I it, don't want you. I don't want you guys to get the impression that this is a heavily um, bandwidth intensive app. Yeah, I guess my question was what what information is being pushed to the cloud, and this is a question from the the panelists as well or the attendees. Is, mm -hmm, so well, what information is being kind of pushed and stored to the cloud? Well, we push to start with the metadata, so your labels and your identity information. Um, obviously to drive the notifications and the analytics. And we push the best phases um, of, those, uh, of those detected events. Um, once you create an identity in the system and you add phases to it, those phases are also persisted. Um, everything else is in your server. So basically best face is pushed to the cloud and then associated metadata to that face. Yeah, so actually like more, more than a discrete face, Tony, to be precise, it's a uh -huh. track. So we group them. We don't offer you discrete faces if okay. we, um, unless, or unless they happen, which they rarely do. Um, we offer you whole tracks. Okay. And <clears throat> I'll, I'll, show you, I'll show you when we, yeah, when we no jump problem. into the app for you to see. <laughs> okay, and then um, one, one question came in about the application. So sure. you've shown like a VIP management and kind of personnel management. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, is that where you guys mainly see it used for? Or do you also see it used for like uh, intruder detection? Like that type of stuff uh, where like unrecognized person came in? It's actually both. Again, okay. you p people of interest is very loose. Uh, it's a very loose term. You could be interested in blacklist and banned use cases, but you can also be interested from a service perspective into knowing who your best customers are. You can use this um, to track ins and outs of, like you said before, staff. Um, so what the app is, like is um, sorry, sorry to interrupt. What would you say no. is the most common use case that you guys? Well, I mean, actually, those two, those those two are the the most common ones. Those are the in, in, in gaming, in gaming um, uh, venues and hospitality, um, this whitelist blacklist scenario uh, is is seen a lot. So. Yep. On the, one, on the one hand, you want to make sure that you block antisocial patrons and you keep everyone safe. Um, also, in gaming venues, there's this uh, notion of self-exclusion list. I know some states in the US use it too, but I don't know how widespread it is. Um, self-exclusion is a voluntary list that problem gamblers can subscribe to to um, ask the venue to pull them away from the gaming, uh, the gaming machines if they're seen around. So Got you. It's, a it's a very critical piece of information and uh, venues manage it in with a software like ours. But then on the other hand, you, you can also, you can't also override the importance of uh, understanding who your VIP customers are, providing them great service, keeping an eye on your members. Um, if there's a group of people that you can, you want to keep an eye on, this is a good tool to use. Gotcha. So there's a couple more questions, but I'm going to hold off on them guys. <laughs> so because uh, cool. uh, heck, Matt, you asked how it's going to work with an existing system and use that. That's the second half of the presentation, my friend. Yeah, yeah, up. exactly. Okay, so you're uh, going to you show us right now. You're going to show us NeoVision on its own. That's right. right. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a moment. So please be patient with me. 
Um, I'm going to jump into AirPlay and I'm going to AirPlay my iPad into my Mac via Zoom. Tony, isn't that the most, <laughs> the most incredible phrase of, okay, here we are. Do you see the screen? Yes. Fabulous. So um, this is the identities view. You've seen this before uh, in the slides, but I want to show you what this looks like. So I'm going to find myself. There I am. Um, the first thing that should catch your attention is the faces that include my identity. You see faces from the camera in the top row. That um, bottom left one is an uploaded face from 2007, braces and all. Um, mm -hmm. You have a selfie photo, um, anything that, uh, uh, those are the sources of, uh, of faces that you can use to create identities in Eurovision. Um, so I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna start with a photo, so. So this is how you can enroll a new face, is that right? Hello everybody. Yep, so you can enroll a face by snapping a photo. Just imagine for a second, a security guard with a, an app like this on their hands, when they catch someone doing something troublesome, they can just pull up the phone, take a photo, and add it to an identity, and that's it. Um, at the same time, some customers may have already built uh, lists of people of interest, um, and so you may have already a database of photos that you can bring to the system. You can also, import them and upload them. Um, the system will detect the faces that are included in the photograph and offer them to you. And oh, there I am. And you can add faces like this too. Uh, but then coming back to a question you had earlier, once an identity is already in the system, we also offer you faces for you to add from past recognition events. So all this of the like uh, recognition events are, are on the system itself. That's absolutely correct. Um, but then you also see that this is my label. This is the way labels look like in the system. Um, this is just an example set, obviously, because that's my demo environment. But this could be anything that you're after to address your use case. Um, I've been blacklisted, uh, and that's <laughs> that's the label that I proudly wear. Um, these are my custom metadata fields. You can see that I have a note saying that I'm allergic to peanuts. I have an external ID there, an employee start date, a favorite drink uh, that could encourage someone to greet me with it. Um, parking access 24 seven, anything, anything that you think it's valuable to store at this stage. And this also becomes a key portion of information to generate these type of, um, of insights that we're after. And those and fields are completely customizable by the system administrator? Absolutely, yes. Um, and then at the bottom, you see here a list of, this is me coming to the office this morning, every time that I was seen. And if you spot that little um, bell icon on the top left corner, that indicates that this event also triggered a real-time alert. And um, at this point, if there's anything that you want to, uh, like in this point, I'm talking to the guy that does fish maintenance for the office, you can tap on it and play video. These colors that you can see here on the cameras list are the colors of the labels that are included in the events that happened around that time. All right. A real quick question. Was that sure. a snooker table? <laughs> it is. <laughs> Yeah, it was a strange looking table, so, all right. So now, now I know that if I invite you to the Sydney office, then you're gonna come, right? <laughs> big big Snooker fan. So um, this is the, I'm gonna jump from this identity view to the activity view now, uh, show you a little bit about um, the, the topics that we reviewed before. Uh, the time filters at the top that let you explore your analytics across multiple time frames and hopefully help you find moments of interest. Like for example, there's a little red bar over here at the top left, and that indicates that there's people with the blacklist label that were recognized at that time. So I can tap on it, jump to this point in time and review the events. You can see that I was wandering around and, uh, and triggering all kinds of alerts. Uh, at this point, you can either wonder more about this person and access their profile, all right, yes, yeah, she has correct access to, to come to this, to this venue at this very time. Or if you need more clarification, again, you can jump to the video and play it back. Um, this is also something that, it's gonna, that, that I'm gonna show you from NXA side, right? Because this is relying on the footage that we have stored in the server. But if you have the integration to a product like NX, 
you have this information synced against your footage and you keep that for as long as your footage retention lasts. So uh, one question, um, you're showing us this yeah. on your iPad, is that right? Yeah, that's and, right. And then you have uh, the mobile apps. Correct. Um, uh, is, are the interface is all mobile right now? Uh, we have a web app that you okay. can access from any desktop computer. Okay. Um, but yeah, the apps and the desktop app are available with similar functionality. So it's entirely up to you how you or what you use or which is your platform of choice. Gotcha. Usually, what we what we encounter is depending on the setups that customers have, customers have, they may be more comfortable with an iPad or maybe some people that work from a desktop. Um, are more comfortable with the web app. But yeah, okay. we make it available across platforms so you can choose your weapon of choice. Okay, so web um, apps and mobile applications. Yeah, and then this view, exploring this view, um, we try to uh, provide you, of, on the top you see the filters that we were talking about before. So we can filter by camera, we can filter by label if you're looking just for your VIP, for your blacklist or your VIPs. Or you can filter by individual identities too, if you're trying to recognize someone in the list. Um, I wanna show you what the live view of this product looks like. Uh, and before that, I, can, I wanna show you too that you can focus the, image, uh, the images in the activity list to give you the amount of zoom that you're after. So I can be looking at bodies, I could be looking just at the, at the faces. Um, and this becomes even more powerful when I decide to jump live to know who were the last people that were seen. So this view refreshes automatically as someone comes in. Um, and you see over here, Breeze uh, just showed up uh, and the view refreshes. You see the, his face updating because we are, again, showing you the best face that we detected out of the track. Uh, and you can use then this information to either add faces to Breezy's identity or create someone from scratch. Uh, and this view as well, we expect, we call it reception view mostly because the idea is you see someone come to you in your venue and you want to greet them. Um, you can have information available from their from profile. In this case, I'm just showing you the labels, but your metadata fields would be available here too, in case you want to use them at this stance. Um, so let me jump back to my static view and I want to show you one more thing. Uh, after pushing this product live and spending a lot of time talking to customers, trying to understand the type of problems that they're faced with, um, they raised that very interesting concern to us. Um, it's important to know about the identities you have in the system and the activity. But the, the reason you create this, this identity database is also so you can identify people that are outside of that database, right? Your unknowns, who are your regulars that you don't know about yet, uh, but that they come frequently to your venue and that you just miss out on them because they are not on your identity database. So that's why we also um, show you unrecognized people. Unrecognized people are people that we uh, whose faces we detected as part of Near Vision's working every day. But when trying to match them against your database, we couldn't find them. Um, this information then, after a while, can start surfacing people that come to your venue regularly that you may want to know about. So we make this um, available to you. You can use any of these to create an identity and discover new people. Um, and this is the portion that um, once you create this identity, for the time being, you, um, you need to wait for them to show up once again for the system to pick them up. But soon, we'll, show, we'll allow you to um, backwards track the appearance of this same person so you can find them in previous um, appearances. So this, this is something that you asked me earlier on and that I said I'll, I'll address at this stage. But I think it's very powerful and it's going to be, um, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so um, a couple questions came in. Sure. Uh, when you change a label on a user, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Does it does it also change all the past uh, identifications? Absolutely. Or? Yes. Okay. Yes, it does. Um, and the tags are stored. Oh, that's a different question, Byron. All right. <laughs> so number no, the second thing. What is type? Oh. <laughs> I love that. I'll show you. So. 
you know how we were talking before that um, that we do have a, a workflow builder uh, that we call Alarm, uh, and that triggers real-time notifications based on labels, identities. Um, this is uh, this type over here, this type filter, uh -huh. lets, you, uh, lets you filter um, the activity view by the result that we triggered after the recognition. That could be either a real-time alert or it could be an access control result such as triggering a door opening. Okay. So what this filter is aiming to show you is the ability to filter events to the specific type. So if it's like front door access would be a type, then you could just say, show me all the faces that, that, that triggered front door access. Correct, yeah. Or you can do, I mean, you can also do- so uh, In a subway environment, you could have it potentially by like turnstile, like the different turnstiles they went through, yeah. different entrances they came through. That's correct. Okay. Yep, that, that's um, what Yep, yeah, sorry, that's, that, that, there was another question, but I'll wait till later for the end. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, perfect. So when it comes to your vision, I've showed you what I wanted to show you. Um, so I want to jump back to NX. Uh, so bear with me for a second while I stop sharing my iPad and I'm going to go back to my screen. So this is the part where you guys ask, what does it look like integrated with uh, NX? Right. <laughs> exactly. That's what we're here for, right? What What are the benefits of bringing in a product like NeuroVision into such a, a platform like an X? And the truth is, well, to start with, you can perform more detailed investigations uh, just by the virtue of having identities, names, and labels available to you uh, through the very powerful notification panel. You can search by any of them and play back all the events that were detected with those um, with those variables, uh, you can also search regions of video using NX Smart Search because we sync bounding boxes uh, location to NX, and you can review a timeline of recognitions for every identity that is in the system within the NX platform. Um, there, at the same point in time, you can the, the fact that you that you have an identity run, database running on your premises um, helps us push the bounding box information and label metadata, not only on historical footage, but also on live video. So if you have an operator staring at the camera while someone comes in, the bounding box information will be there. And at the same point in time, if you're not staring at the console, you can use our custom recognition events to create rules and trigger real-time alerts or any other system action that you're interested in. So then you can immediately know that someone of interest has been spotted in your premises. And ultimately, uh, you can, not only you can review historically and address situations in a live manner, but you can uh, use your identity engine, the one that you created, to trigger actions such as revoking or granting physical access, checking members in and out of your premises, or post updates to other systems. So, this is the part that I want to highlight at this stage. You, if you set up NeuroVision, you have an identity engine running on your premises, and then you can use this information to uh, trigger any type of action afterwards. Um, if you're wondering, that means, uh, what I'm trying to say here is that we, are, we build it using APIs. So integrations are not only possible, but desirable to complement what the product offers. Um, so, to set it up, um, we developed it using the Metadata SDK. That's why to use NeuroVision with NX, you need to have um, four, version 4.0 onwards. Um, we have a plugin available on Ubuntu and a Windows one that's in the works, uh, but it's gonna be available soon. Um, and in order to use uh, NeuroVision with NX, you need to enable the plugin on a per camera basis and cameras have to have recording enabled uh, because the way that we do it is um, uh, we take a copy of the RTSP stream from NX and that's what you use to pair the camera in the NeoVision platform. Um, do you guys take a copy of the RTSP stream or are you grabbing individual uncompressed frames? We take a copy of the RTSP stream. Okay, so you're grabbing, you're grabbing it from the RTSP, okay. That's right. Um, when, when it comes to the information that we think, and that's why uh, we studied this presentation with near vision side, now that you know what the product looks like, you understand that we think the bounding box placement, we think the identity name and the labels, uh, as many as the identity has. And um, we think 
a custom recognition event and a custom unrecognized event. So for both use cases that we talked about that could be used to create roles. <clears throat> um, on your vision side, setting it up, uh, we talked about the server before, um, so I'm gonna skim through it, but you need a dedicated server with an NVIDIA GPU running the latest NeurVision software. Um, and uh, when it comes to setting it up, what we do is again, copy the RDSP stream from NX and, uh, and credentials and use that to create the cameras in the system. So how do, you, one, how, do you, uh, how do you do that? Like which interface do you use to copy the RTSP stream and URL? Is it in NeuroVision? Yeah, yeah. So you set up, uh, you first, you set the camera up in NX. Once the camera is set up in NX, I mean, you know, you know better than I do, NX sets up unique um, identifier for that camera. We use NX's RTSP URL and you bring that to you, uh, with you, sorry, to the NeoVision platform mm -hmm. and you manually pair a camera using those RTSP streams. So you, in NeoVision, you guys, uh, like you, you go to like a section of your interface and you say add stream. Exactly. And then you yep. put in the RTSP stream. Now, does it matter if you put the higher, you, you mentioned this earlier, you said you need, you can do 720p. Is that the maximum mm -hmm. resolution you can do or is it? The no, okay. no, actually the minimum. Um, yep. But um, yeah, I mean, when it comes to the, with the streams uh, recording, yeah, it's, it's hard to tell you a, a, a deterministic answer, but um, uh -huh. Yeah, you need to have you need to have good resolution on the RTSP stream. So usually minimum seven twenty p. Sorry. Minimum seven twenty p. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. That's correct. But then you know that cameras have um, multiple streams, so you may want to record to an X on a resolution and to near vision on another. So we yep. may leverage the sub stream. It's again up to the customers. Um, so, up to the customers' <clears throat> requirements. Okay. So, but in that situation, like let's say I have a camera that does three streams. Yes. Okay. And I got yep. two running to NX and then I take one and I send it to NeuroVision, but I have the plugin installed. Does that, does that break the integration? No, but you have to send to NeuroVision one of the two streams that you have, you're using in NX. You have that's to pull it from, you have to pull it from the VMS. You can't correct. pull it from the camera, correct? Just by virtue of the fact that we have to sync the timestamps of the video in order to be able to sync through the information from the Just double checking. <laughs> no, of, of yep. course. Hey, okay. no, que no question is wrong. Um, so while we talk about this, oh. I'm going to jump into an X. Yeah, this is the question that everybody keeps asking. What does it look like in, in X? <laughs> look like in X? So it guys, great, it's guys. fairly, the way, just a, just a brief uh, explanation too, before we even look at it. Of um, course. The, in 4.0, we introduced the um, notifications panel with objects. We introduced um, a plugins architecture. So yep. analytics plugins, they all work exactly the same way. Now, it doesn't mean that they're the same quality or they identify the same objects. Mm -hmm. but in the NX interface uh, or, or any powered by NX product out there, they're going to look exactly the same. Your That's objects right. are going to show up in the objects panel on the, on the notifications panel on the right. Um, mm -hmm. They're going to be searchable, just like you can yep. with smart search, um, just like you can with keywords. They're going to be searchable. And then the thing that's custom for each plugin is the types of events and actions you can do and mm -hmm. the type of analysis that plugin does, right? So as, as, as uh, Eliana is going to show you here, this is how NeuroVision works. Um, mm -hmm. One thing to keep in mind is this is how all metadata plugin works, plugins work. Mm -hmm. They all work very similar. And that's so that when you are using uh, an analytic, you may use a uh, NeuroVision for identity, identity recognition, right? You may That's use right. something else for license plate recognition. They're still going to come in and be the, it's going to be the same user experience, right? For you as an operator inside of an NX, a powered by NX product, NX witness, uh, and the other products out there. So they're going to mm -hmm. look consistent and they're going to act the same. So, sorry, go ahead. No, uh, show don't, us how don't. it works. Don't worry, that's a, be that's a beautiful intro to these. Um, I'm searching by blacklist label, um, just so, so you can see events of myself too. Uh, as you can see here, when I search for blacklist, I am offered in the objects uh, section of the notifications panel. Every time that we sync the bounding box with this, um, with this label. Uh, so every, every piece of this video is playable and you can uh, accompany in my adventure across the office. <laughs> yeah, a couple of things to note, right? Just like with smart search, smart motion search, you'll notice that the, the things that have been identified in the search show up on the timeline in a different color. Smart exactly. search is, is red, right? So it's just regular old motion uh, mm -hmm. is red. 
um, anything that comes in from a plugin is going to be yellow, right? Yeah. So just like with Smart Search, if you jump back in time to like an earlier event and you mm -hmm. press play, it's going to go through event by event and play back based off of your search criteria, yep. right? Um, so. Speaking of search criteria, let me show you um, what the search looks like for bounding boxes as well, because you said you said it yourself. Smart search is yep. a crowd favorite uh, because we think bounding box placement. If I select an area of interest, I get every single bounding box across that area of interest, and I can play these events. And so basically, to, if yeah, I want, if we want to see every time you were playing snooker, we could highlight the snooker table. That's and then, right. And then I don't see, right? I don't want to give you a FOMO, Tony. That's why I'm not doing. That. <laughs> <laughs> um, now. Is there a reason why you're on the blacklist? Uh, I'd rather not say if you don't <laughs> mind. <laughs> if I, uh, yeah, I've been, I've, I've been, I've been naughty. <laughs> All right, so um, I show you so, the object search, um, and I know that, that that that's part of what you were that you were interested in. Let me show you as well what this custom event looks like. Uh, we all, we're thinking recognition events, and we're thinking unrecognized events. So. Uh, it can come to the events tab and play back from any of them too. Um, and I know that also uh, the, other, the other event of interest for, um, for our audience has to do with, um, with the custom rules and how rules make the well, interface shine. Let's step so, back a little bit, Eliana. Okay, oh yeah. so like uh, one of the questions is how, is how do you add this to your existing uh, system, right? So uh, big picture. What, yes. Right? Big picture, um, when you install, uh, mm -hmm. when you install Power by Next product now, uh, mm -hmm. version 4.0, uh, in the, um, in the, in the Windows, if you're in Windows, in the Windows mm -hmm. directory where the actual application is installed, there's a new mm -hmm. folder under the media server called right. plugin. Okay. And what you're going to do is you're going to download the plugin, um, from, uh, from our, from works with NX, or you're going to get it from Nero. Um, yep. And then you're going to take that plugin, you're going to put it in that folder. Now, when mm -hmm. you do that, um, Eliana, can you go to your, um, close that dialog and go to yep. the hamburger menu and open system, the hamburger system menu. menu? Yeah, there you oh, go. Okay. Sorry. Uh, you can go there too. System administration. Um, and, and then what you're going to see is plugins appear in mm -hmm. your system administration dialog. Now, this will only show up when you have a plugin installed, right? Yeah. Um, so you can see there's some configuration information here that's mm -hmm. required, right? Mm -hmm. So for Nero, you guys require the port of the server, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, I don't know what environment is, so maybe you can explain what that is. Yeah, well, in this case, it means that it's pointing at our testing environment. Uh, okay. And that's just to, because it's set up against my demo environment on Nero Region 2. Um, uh -huh. But yeah, that, that's the reason that it's saying staging and not production. Okay, so it would be production in the real world, right? That's right. Okay, so it's really just pointing it at a specific port. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, close that and then right click on the camera. Yeah. And you're going to go into the camera that you want to enable this plugin on. You're going to click Correct. on the plugin that you want to enable, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then you're going to click on enable. <laughs> it's <right>. really easy, <laughs> right? And, and you're going to press apply. And then that's going to apply this analytic to this camera. That's okay? right. So that's gonna all you need to do. do. This um, mm -hmm. You're going to need to do this on all the cameras you're going to want to set up an <laughs> analytic on. The other yes. thing that's important is, um, like uh, Eliana mentioned it before, you you need to install the plugin on all the uh, servers that have cameras attached to them that you want to run the analytic on. That's so if you've got correct. If you've got four servers in your system across four different sites and you want to put face recognition at all the entry points, Yep. then you're going to need to install this plugin on the servers that the cameras that are viewing the entry points are upon. Right. That's right. The best yes. thing to do in version 4.0, actually, um, with the plugins, we've discovered there's a performance issue where actually you, you just install it on all your servers because of synchronization issues. So mm -hmm. in 4.1, we're going to be introducing a fix for that. But right now, actually, you're just going to install the plugin on all the servers in the system. Um, and so, so, we have a whole, uh, we'll have set up instructions and stuff like that uh, mm -hmm. where you can find it on Works with NX. Um, and Nero and, and our team will work with you on any issues you encounter while you're implementing this. But exactly. it should be really straightforward and simple. 
Yeah. Uh, so. uh, we, obviously, we're, we're tech people. We don't want to jinx it. But yeah, we try to make this process as streamlined as possible. So anyone can jump on, uh, on Near Vision pretty quickly and start leveraging the, the, the biometric, right. well, the identity information. Actually. So how do you tell if, here's the thing, how can you tell if, uh, uh, this is a question, I guess, from you guys, how can you tell if the plugin is working properly, right? Well, you go to, you go to the camera where you set the plug up on mm -hmm. and you go to right click on that camera. Mm -hmm. and there's objects and frames info. Yep. And objects and frames info, you can do show always or show mm -hmm. only with objects tab. Yeah. When you do show always any face that starts to come through in, in live, you're going to see a bounding box on it. Even exactly. if you're recognized or unrecognized, you're still going to see them start to be recognized and they're yeah. going to show up in the objects here. And that's mm -hmm. how you know you successfully configured it. Right. Yes, that's so right. That's simple. So uh, if, if, if faces or, or custom events aren't coming through, Tony, then yeah, you need to, you need to tune it up. Yep. Now the, um, how do you, the, the next step is like, how do we set up alerts? I think you're about to go over that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry to, I didn't mean to interrupt at that point. I, I could just get so carried out. Uh, that's all right. So, so now when you're setting up the event, you mm -hmm. go to events rules, the rules engine, yeah. right? Yes. And you grab analytics event. Analytics exactly. event it, it works for many different things, obviously, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, it works for the in-camera analytics. It works for any kind of integrated analytics. Mm -hmm. And when a plugin is installed, it will add additional, um, uh, you can see different events based off the cameras that you've selected. Exactly. So here you have a system where Nero has, Vision has been set up on two cameras mm -hmm. um, and those two cameras are selected, right? So yes. as a result, what you see is the Nero, um, Nero events that can occur, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. Recognized or unknown. Yes. Right? Okay, so you just collect those. You can ignore the caption. You can ignore the description part of it. This yeah. is, it's a, honestly, it's a hangover from the generic events. Okay? So <laughs> no it, but, it, but it can be used in some, some, it can be used by our analytics partners because they can send additional metadata that you may not have as an event, but you can still use it, right? So recognize it, uh, identity with like um, a specific uh, word that you put in a caption. Right, yeah. Based off of the event, we'll give you an additional filter, right? That we you, beat, can use. you you beat me to it. I was just gonna say that um yeah, the only reason that I or the only scenario where I use the caption is if I only want to be alerted, for example, for blacklist label. Yes. You would use you would use this um this box to enter the black or the name of the label that you're interested in uh, only, and that would filter the events for you. It just allows you to get more advanced filters than the exactly. base the, the the built in functionality, right? So it allows exactly. you to just filter down even further. So yeah. in this case, you set up um, the event, you set it on which cameras, you've got the event type. Yeah. And schedule allows you to select when this, uh, when this will run, when this rule mm -hmm. will run. Exactly. So right yeah. now it runs all the time at NeuroVision, yeah. right? Um, yes. And then, sorry, you can close that one. And then, uh, then you can choose your action. Just yes. like with every other type of event that we have exactly. uh, in the NX platform, you can choose any one of these actions, including, you know, send a send an HTTP request to some third party system. Yes. Right? So yes, you could have you could have a recognized identity, right? Automatically open up an access control door. Yes. Which would allow you to have hands free access control, which as most of you guys know is like the holy grail of security, <laughs> right? Um, so, Indeed. <laughs> So being able to do that is 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 amazing, right? Um, but you can do it. You can do it with many different things. Mm -hmm. um, you could even use it to do things like change lighting, change uh, environmental conditions yeah. based off of the person that's identified. Yeah. So you could really use this for many, many, many different things. Sorry. That's what, no, don't worry. Uh, on the contrary, I mean, this is this is the highlight that I also the big takeaway that I also want the audience to take with them. Um, you, you install an, an, an identity engine like ours, and then you define what you want to act on, right? Tony, you said it yourself. It could be a grant or revoke access scenario. You can trigger uh, your environment to respond to it. You can call someone's attention. You can send them a message. Um, you design the workflow. We just make it happen. Right. So um, all right. So NX, for, for the NX demo, um, I showed you the objects. I showed you the custom events, and we looked at the rules and setup. Uh, is there anything else in this that you want to see? If not, I'm going to jump back to the slides. I think you did a pretty good job. Now, yeah, I do have a question. 
Um, Go for have it. you opened up your web app inside of our client? So uh, you can do that. Uh, it's a bit uh, cumbersome to do, but I can show you. Oh, you, you have it already. Yeah, I have it already. Uh, it's going to be slow, a little bit slow because I'm using the office Wi-Fi, but you can log in from NX, the NX interface. And this is, as you see over here, this, the dashboard means that it's pointing to our web app uh, that could be accessed from your desktop computer. So well, if this you- This is pretty amazing. So you can have the camera, the main camera right next to the NeuroVision application. Mm -hmm. uh, um, indeed, yes. Same interface. Uh, obviously on a setup like this, um, you want to leverage NXC's VMS capabilities, but the identity portion of the problem, so creating identities, onboarding new identities into the system, label them and grouping them happens on the Near Vision platform. So you can do this from this view or you can do it from the mobile apps, whichever is more convenient. Yeah. So you could combine the Nero Vision and, and, and the browser, by the way, is one of the things we're working on for 4.1, um, mm -hmm. where we're gonna have a much more full featured uh, Chrome browser built in. Ooh. So the browser itself is going to get significantly better. So you can start to combine these different things and have one kind of seamless operator interface for controlling okay. both systems. That, that is cool. that is lovely. I, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. All right. All right. Coming back to my slides now. Uh, I'm going to share this again. Are we do you see that now? Yes. Perfect. So I recorded a few videos before because, you know, Murphy's Law and all. <laughs> yeah, we don't need to go over these, but guys, this presentation and the, the, the webinar will be up online, uh, recorded for you guys to come back and look at this. Um, there's some yeah. questions I have for you. Uh, yeah. Anna. Um, how does your, how is your price? How does your pricing work? Well, Near Vision is subscription based. So we charge a um, monthly fee that's relative to two variables the number of cameras that you want to connect to your vision and the volume of identities that you want to keep track of. And let me um, clarify this for a second because I know I showed you unknowns before. Uh, what I mean by the identity allocation is the people that you store in your database actively, your identities, uh, not uh, the volume of people that comes through your door. So, so uh, how does that, like what are the, what are the, um, what are the scales for that? Like what is it, you have a starting point and then a kind of- it's a, So it starts from um, the ability to set up up to two cameras and uh, a handful of, I, I can't recall if it's 50 or 100, but a, a, an allocation of identities. And uh, then it scales more than proportionally. Um, obviously, if anyone is interested in concrete details, if you give yes. me these two variables, I'll be able to send you detailed pricing about it. So basically um, contact you for pricing, right? Certainly, yeah, of course, involve your NX sales rep as well, uh, yep. because this is a, this is a, a joint effort. But uh, yeah, if you, if you have a concrete, especially if you, if you have a concrete project in mind that you want to discuss, you're not sure how many cameras could work for uh, your floor layout, you can just drop us an email and I'll send you a detailed expression. All right. Um, let me see some other questions. Sure. There's one thing, Tony, that I didn't mention before um, that I wanted to, to bring up as well. We talked about camera placement, but we didn't talk about camera brands. And similar to NX, we are also camera agnostic. So um, if an IP camera has an RTSP stream, which basically means that you can use it with an X, you can use it with NeuroVision. That's the yeah. easiest way to put it. Yep, makes sense. Um, trying to see, I think we might've gotten all the cameras. Anybody, or wow. questions. Does anybody have questions? Wait, one's coming in from chat. <laughs> Any reference sites? Okay, here we go. Um, do, 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 do. Ooh, Will this be available for review later? Oh, one question was, um, one question earlier was, uh, does it only, uh, I, I, I know the answer, but I'm just gonna ask it to you anyways. Does the uh, NeuroVision uh, look at re already recorded video or does it only work on live streams? Uh, so I don't know, I'm pretty sure that what that means is if we update the results backwards after an event happened. No, so, like for example, uh, if I implement NeuroVision on my system today and I already have 30 days of recorded video, will it automatically tag all the faces in the archive? No, no. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you, <laughs> yeah, no, guys. Um, um, and that's because you'd have to reprocess it, right? Think of it like 
we the, have yeah. to send a stream to Nero for them to identify faces from that, an RTSP stream, right? So actually, got existing, sorry, yeah. go ahead. No, no, I was going to say that the, the answer is actually not yet. <laughs> not I mean, yet. It, it, it's an interesting problem to tackle, right? I understand the reason that the, the audience is asking this question. It's also something that businesses are faced with on a very frequent manner. Uh, so uh, it's not yet, but we are definitely investigating opportunities to do that. That's part awesome. of, um, that's why coming back to, um, I, I started this presentation talking about the team and the fact that we have a machine learning team on site and that we develop this ourselves. Uh, when we narrow down the problem that we want to solve, what we're trying to signal our audience is this is the problem that we want to be great at. So um, this is the, the, the portion of, of, of the, of the um, environment that we're going to keep investing time and effort on. Great. So last question I think is, are there any reference sites in Australia? Well, we have the average uh, implementation of Near Vision is uh, four to eight cameras and a thousand identities to put it, um, to put it in perspective. I know that, you're, that the, the question aims to answer concrete use cases, but we, are, um, we respect the privacy of our customers and uh, we, we can't expose use cases yet. Um, but if they are looking for more concrete information, again, what I'd say, Tony, is the safest way, email your NX sales rep and bring me into the conversation and we can talk about it. Yes, I agree. Good answer. All right. Um, that is about it for right now. Fabulous. Uh, I think we have an existing site with NX VMS and other without an VMS. How will this work? <laughs> those are those are specific <laughs> question guys and i think you should uh uh email your nx rep and cc uh, eliana and we can get back to you guys on specific questions um, um if there okay. are no other general questions um <laughs> then i think we're pretty much done and thank you very much eliana it's very informative thank you very um, much for the invitation tony we really appreciate the opportunity to showcase this work um, we are very happy with this integration and we see lots of potential for it. Um, obviously, being hands-on with a platform like NX shows you the power of a VMS solution and uh, combine that, combining that or complementing that with something like Near Vision could um, bring incredible business value to customers. Yeah. So Guys, I like to call it. I like to call it basically what we're doing with companies like Nero Vision is we're, we're getting to the point now uh, where, um, you know, in the next year or so, you should see quite a few of these uh, solutions come out with, with different focus on different types of, of analysis. Yeah. And the end goal here is what I like to call Google for the real world, <laughs> right? Um, you can I like literally that. go back in time and see exactly what happened at the sites. And, and for, you know, from, a, from an IP video perspective, you know, for, for the longest period of time, IP video has been what's been called an event review technology. Mm -hmm. um, and in the deep learning driven uh, AI powered analytics like Nero, they really turn a video into an actionable business intelligence tool. So what it allows you to do is, you know, it allows you to reach outside what the traditional security surveillance space is yeah. uh, to get projects that you may not have gotten in the past because you're really, and Eliana's touched on this a couple of times, you're really just increasing the situational awareness of mm -hmm. uh, the people who run these facilities, right? Um, and, and it could be used from anything from retail analytics uh, to learn more about your customers. Um, it can be uh, used uh, like for high value uh, retail environments, for secure environments. It can be used across just basically anything you can think of in terms of, you know, when, wh when you want to know uh, who's at your premises, like Nero Vision mm -hmm. says. So <laughs> combining these things together, it just, just, it just turns your kind of boring old IP, what I called uh, in the past was making boring videos. <laughs> or making boring, making boring movies, um, just instead of recording 24 hours a day, right? Yeah. Uh, if you're really got, a, if you've got a customer whose primary concern is, well, I want to know when people are at are at this location and what they're doing. Well, mm -hmm. combining with NeuroVision allows you to cut down recording costs significantly because, hey, that's not a person, right? Mm -hmm. They don't have a face; so they're not a person, right? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you could you could say, yeah, they're covering their face, right? But at the same yeah. time, most people don't even think about that with cameras. The, the, the key point being that. Com the combination of our technology with companies like NeuroVision just raises the whole um, value of the solutions that we're offering, right? And that you guys are offering and putting together for your customers. So what a great way to end this webinar with. All right. 
So thank you, Eliana. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Um, this will be up online. Uh, I'll put it on YouTube, and it'll be on our social media sites, and I'm sure uh, Nero Vision will probably share as well. Um, Certainly. And if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to email us and CC Eliana, and uh, thank you. we'll go from there. Thank you very much again. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day. You too. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Eliana.